What's up, Small Play Colt? Thanks so much for tuning in to my first knife making video. In this video, I'll be doing a full build of an Elgian Custom Chef Knife, one of my all-purpose chef knives. Right now, I am trimming up some handle material, getting it ready for drill up. Right after this, I take it to the sander, and I sand up all the edges and align everything, make sure it's nice and crisp for the perfect drill up. Now that the handle material is all cleaned up, I take it right to the drill press. For this knife, I'm using 316 pins, so I put in a 316 bit, and I have everything clamped down with just a simple C-clamp. After the first hole drilled out, I like to add a pin inside of it just to keep it stable, and then I move to the back side. I'm using a full resin handle here, so you want to take your time and be pretty precise because you don't want to overheat the material. After all the holes are drilled out, I like to mark each scale left and right just so I know which side's which. Now I have my scales in order, I like to go back in with a Corby bit. I usually use them for Corby bolts. In this case, I'm using it to remove a bunch of excess material so the pins fit perfectly. You don't want them too tight and you don't want them too loose. You need to find the perfect medium. This is all part of knife making that's becomes really fun or irritating for some people. You gotta learn as you go. Now that the holes are all drilled up, we're doing a dry fit. So I put the pins in place and I add the tang back on just to make sure everything is all aligned. Now that everything's lined up, I take the tang and I pop it right back onto the handle material and I begin tracing it out just so I know where to cut on the bandsaw. You don't need to be too precise with this, you just want a nice general outline so you know exactly where you're cutting at. Here I am cutting out the handle material. I cut out the left scale already and I put it on top of the right side of the scale. This allows for more precision and for each side to be perfectly lined up. I'm using a generic Ryobi bandsaw here, but I did tweak it a little bit and I do have a thicker blade on it. It's more sturdy and allows for a lot more jobs to be done. If anyone's interested, I can drop the link in the comments of what I use. After your scales are cut out, it's time to sand the fronts. I start off with a 60 grit, and now I can move up to 120, 240, and then a 400. And then I'll take it to hand sanding. But first I like to shape up the whole entire handle and get it nice and prepped. After the fronts are shaped and fully polished, it's time for glue up. I glued up everything, but I saved us the headache of that clip because it gets really boring. Right now I'm actually sanding off the excess glue and getting ready for final sanding. Again with the belt sander, I like to start off with 60 grit, go to 120, 240, and then do a slight polish with 400. Again, I am working with full resin handle material here. So you gotta be very cool with it. Don't let it overheat or else it will melt and it'll start to look weird in some spots. In this video, I am using my 4x36 Wen sander. It's tweaked up a little bit just to meet my needs for sanding. Uh, I normally use a 2x72 Ameribrade sander, but I'm waiting for some electrical issues to get sorted out. Uh, shout out to Ameribrade. They do make the best sanders and it's the workhorse for knife making. You can literally do anything on it, and I recommend everyone to get one. Not only can you finish up your handles on the Ameribrade, but you can also grind steel like no other machine that I've ever used. Hopefully I'll get some discount codes for you guys in the future, and I'll have them posted below right in the caption. The general whole point of using a belt sander is they get all the excess material off so you can expose the full tang of the knife. You want everything looking nice and good and polished, and you might want to go beyond what you think is best just for hand sanding purposes when you do go to polish and finish this blade. You don't want to go back and see scratches that you missed and that's always a headache because then you got to start and jump back down the grip and it's never fun. So this part is very, very, very important. Take care of this first. It will save you many headaches down the road. Trust me. After I make a couple more videos and I find my groove, I think I'm going to lay out my whole entire shop set up including tools and other things that I use for knife making just because I want to be up front with you guys and show you everything that I use so you can be on the same page as I am. 
Now we are at the hand sanding stage. This is the most important part. I usually jump back down to 320 grit and work my way all the way up to a 3000 on each side, including the spines and both the sides of the handle. After the handle is completely sanded up, I take it right to my drill press where I have a buffing system set up. I use white buffing compound and I have this little wheel that you see here and then I also have another wheel that finishes the entire process and really gets the compound worked into the handle material. This model is called my Eldian. It's one of my all-purpose chef knives and I make them in 6.5 to around 9 inches. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this. Next video up is my whetstone tutorial. Stay tuned.